Null pointer exception, the infamous exception every Java developer has to deal with at one point of time or another. So there is a new standard called JSpecify that is trying to eliminate these null pointer exceptions altogether. But in this video, let's see how JSpecify helps us to avoid this null pointer exception. And let's talk about JSpecify first. So if you go to start here, you can see a group of organizations like Google, JetBrains, Microsoft, Oracle, and a bunch of other organizations, they came together and then thought through it because earlier also there were many attempts to come up with some approach to avoid this null point exception, but uh, not with great success. So this time, all of these bright minds come together and come up with this JSpecify uh, standards. And uh, in this video, I'm going to explore how we can use JSpecify and uh, we can probably get rid of these null pointer exceptions altogether. And also Spring Boot 4 supports JSpecify out of the box. And we are going to uh, take a look at how JSpecify is going to help us uh, avoiding this null pointer exception. So let's get into it. So here we have a simple Maven project here. And in the main method, we have a string variable name, uh, which is assigned uh, null value. And if we try to print the length of uh, name um, because if this is a null value IntelliJ do some data flow analysis and then warn us if there are any potential uh, issues like null pointer exception so here it is already warning us let's try some more uh, use cases uh, let's say we have a static method which returns a string get address and let's simply return for now just something and then again now let's go ahead and get the address and try to print the length of the address. This time it is not going to show a null point exception here, but now let's imagine if we return null. Now IntelliJ uh, wants us because it is written null and there could be. What if it's a little bit tricky? Like uh, let's say we are going to take a random next boolean and then return something. So here also, if we try to build the project, still in this case, IntelliJ wants us because there is a potential use case where this can be a false and then it can return null. That's why it is showing this one. Let's make it even more tricky by creating another class. Okay, so here I'm going to create a get address method and simply return null here. And from this one, Instead of doing all this, if I'm going to simply return from my repo dot get address. Now here you can see this is not warning about the potential null point exception anymore. So IntelliJ does its best, but there can be a tricky scenarios where it cannot figure out whether this can result in a, a null point exception. Probably from my repo, maybe we are getting some data from database and then returning it. And IntelliJ cannot figure out this could be a null or something like that. Okay, so here. Now, this is where JSpecific comes into picture, where it can help us to identify all these null pointer uh, cases and then show us warnings. So let's try using uh, JSpecify and see how it helps. So here, I'm going to add the uh, JSpecify dependency. Refresh Maven and now here, in this method, right, in the example one, this method could return potential uh, null value, right? So I can make use this at nullable annotation. That is to indicate that this method can potentially return null. So whoever is calling this should understand, okay, this can be null before invoking any methods on it. You should uh, check it. Here, IntelliJ already warning us. But what about the MyRepo method here also? Uh, it could return null. So we can add this at nullable annotation to indicate that this method can return null value. But imagine if we need to add the at nullable annotations all over the place in uh, for all the method return types and also you can use that annotation for uh, input arguments and fields also. Uh, it is not a very elegant solution if you have to add this annotation all over the places. So this is where we can simplify this by using a package info.java file. And here you can simply add this at null marked annotation. 
what does this do so when you have a package with package info and uh, with the annotation at null mark by default it is going to assume all the input arguments and all the return types are non nullable if you okay let's don't uh, return null uh, don't mark with at null then it is going to show uh, null is returned by the method declared as null mark which means it is not allowed to return a null value because by default we are assuming that it is not going to be null if you intentionally want to return null you need to explicitly mark that by adding this at null value same is the case if you have any input arguments as well so now we have this annotation and if you go back here we have everything fine uh, not only for inputs let's go ahead and create a simple record person log id string name and uh, string address so here we have this right now if i try to create a record here let's see person p okay so here i'm going to add some valid string this looks fine but if I try to add this null, it is going to show that uh, we are passing null, but in the entire package, we are assuming that everything is non-null. But if you are going to accept null value, you should explicitly define that. So here, if you make this as a nullable, then you can pass. Otherwise, you cannot pass a null value to this field. Okay. So that's how uh, most of the times we don't anticipate null values. So by adding this at null mark, we are specifying all the uh, return types and input arguments and fields are non-nullable. But if you are accepting this, explicitly mark them with at nullable annotation. Okay. So that's how uh, it works. But then you can say, okay, it is showing warnings in the IDE, but uh, my team members doesn't care about the warnings unless it is an error nobody cares so how do you enforce these uh, checks otherwise you should fail the build so how do you uh, make sure that uh, checks are performed we can configure our maven plugin with uh, error prone and null away uh, dependencies so that it will check if there are any um, such violations and if there are uh, let's fail the build. So let's see how we can configure our Maven plugin. So here, if you go to palm.xml and then let's configure this. So here under build plugins, we have Maven compiler plugin and um, here is we configured null away only null marked, which means we are saying check for the J specify nullability stuff only within the package where we have added this null marked annotations. Okay, so here uh, we can also configure to exclude the generated source code and all that. Okay, now here we are using error prone and null away. So these are the annotation process we need. With this setting, not only here we can see the errors, if we don't check for the nullability and then uh, try to compile this. Let's see what happens. So here the build is failed uh, and also here clearly specifying that you are dereferencing an expression that is nullable without check you are dereferencing. In this case if we check if name is a null okay. then if name is not null then you can uh, invoke this it is going to always uh, fail but your compiler won't complain about that because we are checking that next we have another one here okay so again you are forced to check if address is not equals to null then only you can do that okay now if you compile it it will compile fine okay so there are uh, other warnings but nullability issues are resolved now so that's how you can enforce this uh, at the compiler level not only just showing as a warning you can enforce that in your build level as well um, similar to maven we can also configure that 
with uh, Gradle by using Gradle plugin. Now Spring Framework 7 uh, provides out of the box support for JSpecify. It also adds the transitive dependency on JSpecify and also within the framework, uh, Spring Framework and Spring Boot 4, they have added these nullable annotations in entire code base in most of their uh, Spring portfolio projects. So let's take a look at, uh, so here I have a Spring Boot uh, 4 application and I'm using uh, simple web MVC and time lift things. And here, if you take a look at the code, so here I have a simple, very simple controller here. And uh, here you can see, uh, I haven't explicitly added or uh, JSpecify dependency because uh, Spring Boot itself transitively add the uh, JSpecify dependencies and how it uh, helps us. For example, here uh, we are returning a model and view object and here we have the view name and then we uh, have some model uh, with some data and then we are returning this object, right? So here, if you take a look at the code of uh, view and model and here you can see model can be nullable but view name cannot be null. So what happens if I try to pass uh, this value as null? Okay, so here you can see it is showing this uh, error saying uh, you are not supposed to pass null, uh, but you are passing the null value. So you get the check not only within your code, Spring Framework and various Spring Portfolio projects, they have already added the JSpecify annotation so that if you try to pass null value where you are not supposed to, to even framework components, you are going to get these uh, errors. And as I mentioned, if you configure the plugin, it will fail the build, uh, showing that you are passing this null value here. And not only that, let's say, uh, here we are taking a request parameter and we specified it is optional. Required is false means uh, people might not uh, pass this value which uh, will result in a null value. And uh, here we are printing page minus one which is going to fail because it's going to result in null point exception. So if it is optional, if you add this at nullable annotation, Again, it is going to show that, okay, you are unboxing this, that could uh, potentially return a null point exception, okay? You can even configure the inspection levels for this. So here, if you go to uh, editor inspections and search for nullability and data flow problems, right now it is configured with warning level, but if you set it to error, Let's apply it and here you can see it is a error instead of just a warning. Uh, similarly, if you have a null, so it is going to show these not as warnings, instead it will show as uh, errors. So if you prefer to solve all of these with a high priority, uh, you can configure this to error level instead of warning. So to recap, um, if we want to automatically apply at the build um, level, so here, we can specify, uh, should it be a warning or should it be treated as an error, all these nullability checks uh, violations, you can specify, should it be treated as an error and fail the build. And also you can configure various values here. If you want to check only the packages that has this uh, package info with at null marked annotation, you can configure that way or there are other options as well. And also sometimes you may use some code generators like uh, Mapstruct and all, uh, where you don't want to check for that generated code, you can specify which paths you want to exclude from these checks. And also uh, if you want to um, uh, treat the generated code as unannotated, uh, you can uh, configure these flags. So if you go to uh, Nullaway, and here if you go to Wiki, and then there is a configuration section. So here there are various uh, settings and you can tweak it and then verify uh, to your uh, desired behavior. So uh, I would uh, recommend to check out this configuration and also there is a plenty of documentation about JSpecify. I highly recommend you to check this out. So finally, so this is how you can use JSpecify. Not only your ID is going to help you with the warnings or uh, showing them as errors, but also you can uh, enforce those checks at the build level so that you will catch 
all these null pointer exceptions at the compilation time, not waiting for them to happen at runtime and then you have to deal with all that uh, headaches. So I hope this video is helpful and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.